I'm not sure when I first noticed it, that small house that sits atop the bridges. But when I did, it sent sparks of curiosity racing through my mind. Questions began to arise. Who tends these bridges? What hours do they keep? Do they live there? Coming and going as they please? Taking meals in the small outposts? Stopping to watch the traffic? Listening to the hustle and bustle of the city as it whizzes along? I can imagine myself in a place like that. In a city where bridges control the ebb and flow, it's at the heart of things. Where east meets west, where ships pass north to south, I can imagine myself climbing the rigging, sitting at my controls, sipping coffee, watching, waiting, till the next opening. It's one of those jobs that might go overlooked. You might cross the bridge five, six times daily, and never even think, but directly above you is an operator, a lone man, pushing the buttons, pulling the levers, opening the shipping channels to help drive your daily life. Well, I first started working with the ridges. I was actually out working out at Blue Lake Park, and then I guess they say I was doing such a good job. It was a summer job. And so they asked me to work a little bit longer, and they asked me how would I like to work at the bridge shop. And I said, where is that at? And they said it was behind uh, Cornell and Sons store, back way back when Cornell and Sons store was open down here on MLK. And so when they said that, oh, sure. I said, oh, sure, yeah, I'll work there. So when I came back, the doctor said I couldn't do bridge maintenance anymore. And I actually cried because I liked it. I loved it, my job. So. They said, well, we have another job for you. It's a bridge operator's job. I said, oh, what's that? I didn't, you know. So when I got up, when I got up there and I saw the importance of opening up the bridges, I said, well, this might be cool. This might be great. Actually, I still, when, when I first started doing bridge maintenance, I went up there, I go, man, how could you just be up here, man? It seemed like you don't do anything. And then when I got up there, I said, oh, they actually do do something. So it is, you know, it's pretty interesting to me. I didn't, you know, first I didn't, you know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I thought the bridges operated by themselves. You know, I just thought somebody just ran it from somewhere else, from a computer. But that's not the case. It's amazing. You never know what you can do till you do it. Authorization, if, it's, if it comes to that, that comes from the Coast Guard, the harbor master. He has to say so to whether the bridges, that we can open the bridges or not. But other than that, we pretty much, they call us and ask us if they could have an opening. And it's, it's, it's our say so. But we can't open it during rush hour traffic. That is a no-no. Opening it up the bridges, actually, the operation itself, I mean, it's, it's just amazing how you have total control of that bridge. It's all on you. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty interesting. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, how should, how should I say, thrilling? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's actually, it's also important too, though. You know, it's not what everybody thinks. We just don't sit up there and not do anything. That's not how it is at all. It's very important. Do it and everything. I mean, I can stop it on a dime, whatever. Like the maintenance people, they tell me that I'm, I'm one of the smoothest operators on that Hawthorne Bridge, so that makes me feel good. So the Hawthorne Bridge is my favorite bridge. Awesome, you're the smoothest operator. I'm a smooth operator. I didn't walk. I didn't walk up and down the Hawthorne Bridge to the tip top probably about 500 times, maybe. In the cold, in the wind, in the snow. It's, it's fun. It's great. It's great. Like living in the little bridge house or having living in there. <laughs> I don't know if you want to do that, but <laughs> that's the Hawthorne Bridge. That's my baby. That's my baby. <laughs> oh, the view, 
the view can be amazing. The view is beautiful, especially at night. You know, you can see all the beautiful lights around the city. And we actually have colored lights underneath the uh, Morrison. So it's, it's pretty neat. You know, sometimes they actually change colors from time to time. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty nice at nighttime. It's beautiful at nighttime. The view is beautiful, especially if you go on top. Like oh, that. my goodness. Yeah, I was afraid of heights. And when I first started, man, I almost got ran over. I almost got killed on the uh, Broadway Bridge when I was picking up a coned off lane. A yellow beetle bug came into the coned off lane about 40 miles an hour <clears throat> while I was picking up the cones in that lane. And I had to throw the cones up in the air and hop over the guardrail. And the bug just went right by me as soon as I hopped over the guardrail. And I, I threatened to quit. I told him I was quitting. And I'll never forget it, this old man named Don Hilliard talked me out of it. Talked me out, told me not to quit. <clears throat> and I've been there ever since. I was born and raised here, and I, I've been to a few places like California and Vegas. I just think Portland, Oregon is a nice place to raise a family. It's really a beautiful city, and I enjoy living here. Born and raised here. I love it here, man. This is my home. <laughs>